Hi there, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the build of my uh, op amp tester. I received the boards from PCB Way. These are the boards. They came out perfectly well and I like the black. I actually forgot to do the gold, request the gold um, solder tags. But anyway, this is the idea. This is the idea that I had. It worked out perfectly. There's a serrated edge on here. The idea was to break it. Now the problem is that I can't bloody break it. This thing is tough, really tough. And so I'd resort to different means of breaking this thing. Obviously, this is not their fault. It's mine. I wanted to get both pieces of board on one um, board, one PCB that's uh, smaller than 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, which comes out as the cheapest option. I probably will still leave it like this on the share section, but I've got to warn you, you're going to have to cut this with a exacto uh, knife you know, strike it on both sides and then it breaks quite easily. Then you just sand it and I'll show you the result. This is what the result is of the one that I finally broke. And it took quite a bit. It took quite a bit of effort to get this down to these two sections. And the idea, as I mentioned, is that you use some spaces on there. This will be the top end. The only things coming out of here will be the uh, IC sockets and the LEDs. Everything else is soldered on the underside. And then you've got a cover which goes in here. And of course, that nut will tighten it there. It'll have, you know, sort of makeshift feet. And this thing is very, very sturdy. So it'll work very well. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to remove this from here. This is not going to be easy to solder as it is. I just wanted to make sure that it fit well. And it certainly does. So this part of the plan certainly came together well. Pity about the... Um, you know, you're supposed to use, you, you could use a V, a cut on there. And I'll be quite honest with you, I don't know how to do it. And I don't know whether if you do use a V cut, whether they'll still charge you the minimum amount, which is why I did it like this. But anyway, I'm going to get the components, solder this all up. And the next time you see it, it should be populated. Okay, let me carry on. So here we are. Once again, everything worked well. The board is perfect. And uh, thank you PCBWay for that. I personally did not make too many mistakes. In fact, I believe I only made one. And that was um, the switch here. I left uh, 2.54 millimeters instead of 5 millimeters instead of a dual spacing for this. So I had to bend them slightly. Not a problem. If I'd done it properly, this would have been flush which is what I wanted. As it is, it sticks out a little bit, but it's pretty firm. And the whole idea is that um, you will stick in your single, your dual, or your quad. And what I've done is I've made a couple of changes to the board. One of them, of course, is to repair or replace that um, issue here. And the other one is I've actually made some markings that point out that this is the single, this is the dual, this is the quad. So when I share this on PCBWay's website, it'll be the latest version. And here we have it. All we have at the top is the switch, the one LED for that single, the two LEDs for the dual, and the four LEDs for the quad. Now there is one thing that unfortunately happened, and that is that I ran out of dual color LEDs. I believe this one and this one. These two, I've put in normal LEDs. I don't have the dual color, so what's happening now is they're just blinking. And it's only re uh, reacting to a the negative pulse or the positive pulse, depending which way around I put them. But as soon as I get more, I'll remove these and put the dual color LEDs in there. What this tells me is that this thing would be uh, producing a square wave. It doesn't tell me the other issue, the other matter, which is if this thing is uh, blinking, okay, if it's dual color blink, it's okay. If it's a single color, it could be either red or green. If it's red, it means that uh, the output is latching to the positive supply, for example. And if it's green, it's latching to the negative supply. That's what you sometimes get with these op amps. Without the blinking, I won't be able to discern that as well. But these two LEDs will be replaced. And what do we have on the other side? Well, the other side, we've got all the components. And you'll probably notice that I've left the uh, legs of the LEDs purposely high. And the reason was this thing could do with a cover. What do I mean by that? Well, I could easily make this higher because I can actually put two, one on top of each other, and make this higher off the board. 
And ideally, this would probably have a cover on here with the cutouts for the uh, sockets and little holes for the leads, which would then pop out. I'd move the, pull the lead higher, get it to come out of the, uh, the surface, have a cover on here so you won't see any of the, of the solder sides on there. But knowing me, I'll probably just work with it like this. I don't mind having this kind of uh, test equipment on my bench. I don't necessarily need it to be in a commercial-like uh, cover. But this is the sort of thing you can easily do if you've got a 3D printer, which I don't have at the moment. I'm still, yeah, I'm still wondering which one would be best. I need to get one that's fairly inexpensive because I won't be using it that much. And I don't want to, ju I can't justify a huge investment. But on the other hand, I still don't know which one I should get. Perhaps if you have some good suggestions, you can uh, drop me a comment. So the other side, here we are. We've got the uh, op amp there that does the the uh, ground. In other words, it takes the nine volts or whatever it is that I'm inputting here, and it uh, creates the dual supply. There's a small filter cap that's 10 microfarads as per the uh, schematic. That is the, those are the contacts for the battery. If I wanted to use one, I'm not using it here. As I mentioned in the previous video, this cuts out the battery when you plug in a, uh, an external um, supply. And that's probably what I'll be using most of the time. I've got a couple or four, two pairs of uh, just filtering uh, filter caps on the, on the rails. And I've got the, as you can see, I've used two types of capacitors here. I just used what I had. This is all 0.47 microfarads. It gives me the frequency that I want. And it's pretty discernible when the blinking happens. So it came out pretty well. Very well indeed. Okay, now, what was the idea in mounting this to the bottom section? Let's have a look at that. The idea here was to use these guys or any other kind of spacer. I'm just using these. It's about two centimeters, I guess. And let's see if this thing fits well. I've always liked the solution of um, basically trying to get an enclosure out of the PCB. I've seen quite a few situations where they do that and it works well. I'm hoping mine will be similar. And Let's make this the downside. There we go. Now we'll just put the nuts in and then I can tighten everything up. There we go. Done. It's protected from the bottom. It's got four feet. And if I did have a cover on here, I could just use these screws, maybe put one spacer on there and have this uh, 3D printed faceplate. And it would actually look very, very good. It's probably one of the first things I'll do when I do get a 3D printer. So let's test this guy. First thing I do is plug this in. It's all dead at the moment because that switch has not been pushed. I'm setting this to nine volts. I can set it to anything. Remember what's happening here is this is gonna become uh, the dual supply. So whatever I put on here, I'll get half positive, half negative. And let's say I'll put 30 volts, I'll get plus 15, minus 15. It means the op amps will still work. Now, normally I would probably just set this to 12 volts or nine. It works fine with nine and when I switch that on, it means that the power is supplied. Now, what I've got here is I've got a TL071, which is a single op amp. Push the button. See that? Blinking. It should be okay. Okay. I can actually leave this in and put one of the dual op amps. This is the 072. And those two are blinking as well, alternating colors, which means that in principle, they are okay. I'm gonna remove them before I put that one on because it starts looking like a bloody discotheque in here with everything blinking at the same time. 
and I've got a TL074. This is a quad op amp. See what I mean about those two? Those guys are blinking red and green, so those two are fine. These are just blinking on and off. They should be fine, but when I replace the diodes, these will be blinking properly as well. So these op amps are all fine. And now comes the, uh, the comment section. This is a bit of a problem to remove. I thought of using the uh, DIZ, I think they call them DIZ sockets. However, what I noticed with those DIZ sockets, with those quick sockets like this over here, yeah, that'll be work. That'll work better. But what I found is getting um, eight pin ones is difficult in Portugal. It takes a lot long time. And also it takes a lot of space. This would never fit in this kind of space here. I would need to have two eight uh, pin ones and a uh, 14 pin one. I don't think I'd ever get them to fit properly. The point is this thing works. And is it difficult to remove? No, it's not. You just put a little screwdriver underneath and you do that a couple of times, it comes out. You also get IC removers if you want to go to that, to that extreme. So this is the comment I'm going to make about this because a lot of you are going to mention it. This type of socket is not probably not the best socket you can get. However, I like these for this purpose because they do remove a lot easier. Those machined um, sockets are actually tighter. They're better to use. The quality is better. But these guys are easier to remove, much easier to remove, I've found. So that's why I chose that one. The actual switch, you can use all sorts of switches on here. I use this. It's perfectly fine. The amount of current that's going through here is minimal. So I don't have a problem with that. The rest, well, what can I say? There's not much else that I would do to this except what I've already mentioned. Make that a bit bigger, possibly 3D print a cover for this. And I, I don't think I'd do anything different. I like the idea that it's all ready. You know, you just grab one of these from your bench supply or you use a battery if you want, plug it in and it's ready to go. I mean, how much easier can that be? And also this thing's pretty rugged. You know, I can throw this around, nothing to break because it's protected. So this will go on my shelf without much care as to, uh, you know, keeping it safe and all that. And it'll work. It'll just keep working. And when it doesn't, yeah, I've got a few more boards and I'll just build another one. And here is the full schematic of the tester. Everything you need to know is on here and in the videos, this one and the previous one where I described the design. So if you want to go ahead and build it, I think you'll have as much information as you need. Good luck. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that. And I want to thank PCBWay for their sponsorship of this video and the boards. I hope that um, you find this interesting. And if you do and you want to build some yourself, I'll put the link to the shared um, boards, the Gerbers, in the description below. You can go there and just order directly. And if you want to download a Gerbers, it's up to you as well. Just do whatever suits you best. And um, hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon and PayPal. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.